I promised and I'm delivering. We are talking about the long awaited forever Sony user wish in life is the Sony a7S Mark III. So uh, let's just get in to see who this camera is actually made for. Does it look better if I was centered? I feel like that might be a thing. How's that? Is that a good frame? Does that look all right? So I think this frame looks pretty good. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching the video so far. Um, today we're gonna to be talking about the long-awaited Sony a7S Mark III and who essentially this camera is targeted for. And I'm just gonna do a couple of my thoughts. I'm not scripted today at all. I'm just gonna be talking on a whim and just chatting to you about what I think and who I think this camera is made for. So let's get into it. I really think the a7S Mark III is setting in stone that Sony wants to say, hey, we are the kings of 4K mirrorless cameras. And that is essentially what I believe that they're trying to do with this camera. However, this camera really also is targeted to a particular audience, but it still, you know, has enough features to be able to cater for everything. So when I say who it's targeted for, the A7S line of cameras are essentially filming cameras. They're filming mirrorless cameras without going into the big cinema grade cameras. So, if you are a hardcore filmmaker and that is your gig per se, the A7S III is essentially the camera that you want. If you're not someone who's super into photos and you just want one camera in your kit or you want two big filming cameras with some beefy specs, you've got, as I say, 4 to 2 10-bit RAW. I'm gonna pull up my notes again. The beauty of using OneNote is you can just pull it up anywhere you are. It's brilliant. Yes, I was correct. So 10-bit 4 to 2 S-Log, three is an insane Kodak to be filming in. And I love that these cameras are starting to push up into 10 bit filming because the a7 III did not do 10 bit filming. And it was sometimes really quite tricky if you're in weird lighting situations to be able to grade that footage. So the, the Kodak these cameras are filming in are insanely powerful. You can do a lot with them. That's again, the features that we listed, we've got 400,000 ISO on this body, which is an insane number of ISO. And what this essentially means is this camera is gonna be standing up to the hype, standing up to essentially what the A7S III's have been up until this point, and that is insane low light cameras. I'm not trying to sell you on the A7S III, I'm just trying to tell you that if you're a filmmaker, that needs to be versatile, the a this camera is essentially designed for you. You are the target audience because that low light capability on this body is insanely powerful. So I'm gonna keep going on and say that Sony has made a sort of split in their camera body so far. And this is what defines Sony differently to something like the Canon R5. I'll talk about that tomorrow, but Sony has essentially taken their A7S bodies and the A7R bodies and split them into two very separate audiences. So what I mean by this is you have the A9. This is Sony's sports beefy camera, correct? That is, we're gonna leave the A9 as its own category there. You have the A7 series, which are your entry level. So you have your A7, A7 III and A7 II, A1. You get the idea. And then in between you have the A7S and the A7R. And what these two cameras are, are the equal to each other, but the photo version and the film version. If, you're, if you've used Sony for a while now, you know this already, this is not new news. But just going into this, if you want to be able to do photo and video at the quality of each other, so you've got the photos to be as good as the video, you will essentially need to carry these two bodies with you. The A7R doing this super high, dense megapixel photos, and the A7S, doing your crazy low light filming, insane frame rates, that sort of thing. Which in saying that though, having two bodies on you is never a bad time. And in saying that, they both do each other's job relatively well. The A7R does, has decent specs for filming and the A7S III has decent specs for photos. You'll be able to do both, but if you want the same quality and you want to be an all rounder when you head up to a job or you go to a location, carrying these two bodies will be essentially how you'll need to do it, which isn't an issue. It's just how Sony's kind of split their market. This means that they haven't got to completely pump a heap of features into the one camera, creating issues and making one camera be the perfect all rounder, which is impossible. However, just really focusing in on their target audiences, which are the core filmmakers. So as to say, if you are a filmmaker who wants to get the best out of your footage, who wants to get the best 
in low light potential and all that sort of thing, the A7S III is probably the camera for you. But there we kind of have it. That is essentially my little put together on who I believe the Sony a7S III is made for. As to say, I'm not slamming Sony or Canon or anything. I'm just trying to put some information out there today saying, you know, these cameras are out there and they're made for certain audiences. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you took something from this, let me know. Let me know your thoughts on the a7S III because this is way too like, <laughs> the timing for these releases on these cameras are hilariously similar. So these, ca these companies are talking and they know they're gonna be releasing cameras at the same-ish time so again thank you for watching the video if you did like the button like the button <laughs> press the like button subscribe to the channel all that sort of good stuff and i'll see you in the next one bye bye